when I started my degree, there was about 220 people. My first lecture, they said to us, it's not what you see in the TV shows, it's completely different. Welcome back to my channel. So I know it's been a while and with everything that's going on, you know, we're in social lockdown, I figured I might as well do another video. So today's topic is, so you want to be a forensic scientist. So what most of you might not know is I actually have a degree in forensic science. I haven't practiced forensic science because I didn't actually get a job in forensic science. I decided to go out and do another degree and I couldn't actually find a job in my forensic science. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other story. Um, okay, so essentially forensic science is sort of a misconception between a lot of people and that's purely because of what you see in TV shows. So for example, um, when I started my degree, there was about 220 people. My first lecture, they said to us, it's not what you see in the TV shows, it's completely different. And that windled down, us down to about 80 students and about 60 graduated. So, those other 20 went on to do a pure science degree, so don't worry about that. Um, but essentially I'm going to be going through what you're going to do as a forensic scientist and what you actually learn. So in Australia, I was in Sydney, there were two degrees I could possibly do. One was um, forensic science at UTS or forensic science at Western Sydney University, which is now, no, Western Sydney University is what it's called now. It was a different name when I was there. So I obviously picked Western Sydney University's degree. And that was purely because when you did the degree at UTS, you did it purely in forensic chemistry or forensic biology. And that meant that when you went out, you physically had only learnt those two forensic skills. Because when you're outside of this learning area and what they don't tell you in the TV shows is you're stuck to one specific discipline. So CSI or CSI Miami, if you watch them, they go out to a crime scene, collect all the evidence, take it back, they do all the processing on it, they go through all the blood samples, they go through all the fingerprints, they physically do everything in one. And that is not how it works in the real world. Well that's just fantastic! In the real world, you're part of a team and specifically part of that team is what you're doing. So you literally do that one little area. When I was at Western Sydney University, they gave us a broader range of things to learn. So forensic archeology, span forensic chemistry, forensic biology, genetics, crime scene investigation, I think might've been all of them um, that you could put, like you learnt in the whole area. We also did forensic, environmental forensics. So you had a whole broader range of subjects, which is what I appreciated more out of the degree because when you finish your degree, you go out and you do four years of training on site in that specific field of forensic science that you wanted. So essentially when you look at a forensic science unit, you're looking at someone who does forensic biology, forensic chemistry, fire, firearms, toxicology, um, you've got a photography unit that purely does the photographs, you've got crime scene investigation, um, normally you might have someone that does like document examination depending on what country you're in. Um, there's a fingerprint group as well, there's, there's a whole bunch of like little specific groups and niches in the forensic science field. So when you go out and you become this forensic scientist, people go, oh okay cool, so you do everything. You don't do everything and you will never do everything. You're specifically doing one thing the entire time in your career. So for example, for me, uh, when I essentially went through my forensic science degree, I was told that in the first, first run and they gave us like a list of possible jobs that you could do. Um, I really wanted to go into firearms because I thought that was really interesting, but in Australia, you don't really have that many firearms experts and that's purely because we don't all have guns, unlike America, which I still don't understand why America has that many. I don't know, right to bear arms and all. But anyway, so essentially I was like, okay, cool, that sounds great, but I might go into a crime scene investigation because that's really interesting. So I went through all of my subjects, I found out what I liked and what I didn't like, and crime scene investigation was probably my favorite subject out of everything that I did. Um, so I went and applied for jobs, and in Australia it's a bit hard, you'd have to apply, apply to the Australian Federal Police, which I did, and a lot of the times, 
um, any companies that were hiring that were external or even the Australian Federal Police, they would be hiring for someone who had some sort of experience. Oh, that's especially back then, which was a bummer for everyone that graduated with me because we couldn't get jobs because technically we didn't have any experience where graduates coming out to find jobs. So hence why I went and did another degree instead. So when you're looking at forensics, you've got the forensic science part, which is like these sort of things. I don't know, I'm hoping you can see this, these sort of things. Um, and then you've got different types of forensics, which are essentially forensic psychology, forensic odontology, which is teeth. You've got forensic engineering, so car crashes, plane crashes, all that sort of stuff. And then you've got computer forensics, so that's like data analysis and going through and hacking people and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then there's also um, a lot of forensics for the government for tax fraud and all that sort of stuff, so it's like forensic accounting. Um, so there are a lot of forensic fields out there, but you have to decide what you want to go into. So. If you're any of the forensics, like the psychology, odontology, engineering, computer, you do not do a forensic science degree. They do not come under forensic science whatsoever because they are technically not science. Um, you have to physically go out and do an engineering degree, a psychology degree, and you will have a subject that will be called forensic whatever. And you'll have one subject that is based on that. Um, and that is essentially where that comes into play. Um, so those topics generally you go out and you get experience in them and then you go okay well I want to go into forensics in this topic whereas forensic science you've got your list of that you could possibly do and you have to pick one and go and do it um, so essentially there's some things that you have to think about if you want to become a forensic scientist um, you can't go out and just become a forensic scientist um, if you are watching TV shows NCIS is probably the closest to a good example of a forensic scientist and that is purely because the actress that plays Abby Shido actually was a forensic scientist and she made sure that she pushed a lot of those forensic elements in there but obviously the only thing that she does is she does absolutely everything not just the one but she does it a lot more appropriately than what CSI does so she does a lot of like she doesn't wear the hair masks and all the lovely stuff that you might see but she doesn't go out to the crime scenes and take the photos and do the blood samples. That's obviously like McGee and Gibbs and all that that have gone out to collect it. So that technical part is technically right, which was what happens. Um, but yeah, so that's probably the closest that you find. Um, one massive thing that people get confused with all the time and obviously if you're researching about forensic scientists, you probably would know this by now, but we're not coroners. So when they say, oh my God, you go and you play with dead bodies and stuff, that's not us. Like we don't go out and play with dead bodies. If you want to play with dead bodies, you have to become a coroner. And that's purely because you're looking at those bodies. You'll be doing a lot of like, um, a lot of biology. Um, essentially you're doing exactly what a doctor would do, but on someone who's dead. And that's, I think, where a lot of people don't realise where the separation occurs. So, yes, we go out to the crime scenes, get the samples and everything like that, but we don't sit there and go, okay, let's open up this body and see what's happened. Like, that's not what a forensic scientist does. And again, NCIS is a good example of that because they actually have a coroner and you can actually see how the coroners work with the forensic scientists. And essentially that is how it works. So if you want to become a forensic scientist, um, hopefully this video has given you a good indication of what you would need to think about, what um, you would want to know before going into a forensic science degree and also to research the degrees that are out there, um, especially in Sydney, I've given you my view. If you're a chemistry and biology person, um, you could probably go to UTS. If you're wanting something more all round so you get a feel of everything so you know what you want to go into, UWS would be my pick, or WSU, whatever it is now. Um, so yeah, definitely if you want to know a little bit more or if you have any questions for me, you feel free to leave it in the comments. I can give you my best 
information that I possibly know from spending three years at uni doing forensics. Um, if you also want to know a bit more about each specific forensic field, um, also let me know in the comments and I can do a specific video on them for you. And yeah, hopefully this hasn't been too long and hasn't been a drag of me just talking about forensics. But yeah, have a great day guys. I've been playing with this pen the entire time. But have a great day guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again soon.